gonna need a bigger boat. I've asked you want to be weekend pirates looking to shrug off the burden of a 40 hour work week. Welcome to another Slack Tide travel guide. On this episode, Old Slack Tide's taking you to Southwest Florida, where we'll be digging our toes in the sand for a budget seven day vacation in Siesta Key. Before we get started, if you enjoy the content you see on the Slack Tide Adventures channel, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. With that done, grab your favorite boat drink, your coconut scented suntan oil, and let's examine a week long beach vacation to America's most beautiful beach without breaking the bank. As always, we're starting our journey in Georgia's Golden Isles, specifically the fishing pier on Jekyll Island. From there, we'll head southwest through Lock Loose of Florida before picking up Interstate 75 just outside of Tampa. That'll take us to Sarasota and we'll exit off on our way to Siesta Key. If you're not familiar with Siesta Key, the island is about eight miles long and it's just a short ride from downtown Sarasota. Most of the activity on the island is centered around Siesta Key Village, where you find the majority of the restaurants, nightlife, and shopping. The island has some phenomenal beaches, including Sunset Beach, Siesta Beach, Crescent Beach, and Turtle Beach. There is also a family-friendly snorkeling spot just south of Crescent Beach called Point of Rocks. Over the next five minutes, Slack Tide is going to walk you through traveling to Siesta Key, where to stay once you get here, and the best ways to get around the island on your visit. Without further ado, let's get started. Whenever I examine traveling to a location, I try to provide you guys with some legitimate options, but everyone is different. On our previous trip to Siesta Key, we met people who had driven from Kansas, Minnesota, and Ohio, but for some, a five hour drive might be too long. Keep that in mind when you see the examples that I provide. If you live in the Atlanta area, Siesta Key is only a seven hour drive from the capital of the New South. It's not the most scenic route down 75, but it's a straight shot southward. I'm a native son of the great state of Louisiana, and if you live in New Orleans, it's about three hours further than Atlanta. At about 10 hours, it's doable in a single day, especially if you have a second driver in the vehicle. Lastly, if you live in the Music City, you're about an 11 hour drive from Siesta Key. Unfortunately, your trip will take you through Chattanooga and Atlanta, so traffic will be an issue, so pick your departure time wisely. For those of you who aren't located in the Southeast United States and driving 20 hours isn't an option, I'll break down some airfare options for you. For Siesta Key, I'll use Atlanta, New York, Chicago, and Dallas. I figured you West Coast guys would just jump on an airplane and hit a beach in Mexico anyway. Heck, I believe Hawaii is just as close for people who live in California. Mahalo to anyone watching in the Pacific Islands. If you're flying into Siesta Key, you'll more than likely land at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport, but Tampa, which is only 40 minutes away, may offer an even cheaper fare. I'd recommend looking into that option. I use Travelocity to find these fares, but I'm sure you can find them on whatever aggregator site that you prefer. I use the late July date to travel from Saturday to Saturday. For Atlanta and New York, a family of four can fly to the Siesta Key area for under $1,000. That's pretty cheap in this day and age. Dallas and Chicago are a little more expensive at around $1,400 to $1,600 for travel. There are a lot of options for lodging when it comes to staying on Siesta Key. Having visited there, I recommend that you stay on the north end of the island within walking distance of Siesta Key Village and the beach access for Sunset Beach. As you can see on the map, this area has great access to amazing beaches and stunning sunsets. We'll get into navigating around the island in a few minutes, but just know that if you like to imbibe in a cocktail or two, the walking access to the village is a huge plus. This is where the majority of the nightlife that you'll find on the island is concentrated. And as you can see from the satellite view, there are thousands of options when it comes to rentals in this area of the island. The first home that we're going to look at is Lulu's Green, which rents for $225 a night. Lulu's Green sleeps up to five people and has a shared pool. Not to mention, it's in a great location near the village and public beach access. A seven day rental at Lulu's Green comes in at under $2,200 for up to five occupants. That's not too bad. If you're looking for a more budget friendly option, check out this Siesta Key duplex located near Ocean Boulevard. This village area duplex has a great screened in porch and sleeps up to four guests for only $135 a night. With taxes and fees, that comes in to just under $1,600 for the week. Our next Siesta Key option is perfect if you desire easy beach access, since it's directly across from public access number two. The Palms Bay Cottage sleeps five and is wonderfully appointed. 
The Florida style cottage has both a hot tub and dip pool for its guests to enjoy, as well as a covered cabana and gas grill if you plan to cook on your vacation. Rental rates for an entire week run around $2,500, including taxes and fees. Our final home is a little more pricey, but I wanted to showcase everything that the area has to offer. The canal front cottage comes with access to a saltwater canal, so if you intend to do a little fishing while you're down in southwest Florida, this might be a great option, especially if you plan to trailer a boat down. In addition to the seawall, the home comes with a private pool and screened-in porch. It sleeps up to five guests with rental rates at $500 a night. At $4,200 for the week, it's the most expensive option that I'll offer you, but it comes with the most amenities. Once you're on the island, navigating Siesta Key is about as easy as it gets. Beach Road is the backbone of the entire key and runs nearly its entire length. Outside of the short stretch of Ocean Boulevard, which comprises the majority of Siesta Key Village, it's pretty much the only road you'll need to navigate. If you watched any of my videos previously, I'm sure you know that I'm a big fan of biking around town when you're on vacation. Siesta Key is flat everywhere, and there's a nice little bike lane that runs parallel to Beach Boulevard in its entirety. Downtown Sarasota is close enough for you to visit by bicycle if you're feeling adventurous. Biking is a great option because parking spots in the village and at beach access points are at a premium. Siesta Key has 13 designated public beach access points scattered along Ocean Boulevard. Many of these do not offer much in the way of parking. If you are determined to drive your car or truck to the beach, the best option may be the public beach access at Siesta Beach. There's a ton of parking along with beach volleyball courts and well-maintained public restrooms. This is a great option for a beach day if you don't live within walking distance of one of the public accesses. A little further south down Beach Road, you'll find Crescent Beach and Point of Rocks. You really can't go wrong whichever beach you choose to set your chair on, but you can piggyback a snorkeling trip to Point of Rocks onto a day trip to Crescent Beach. Point of Rocks is a limestone shelf that protrudes through the sand and holds various fish and marine life. You can see it on the satellite photo on the map. There's not much in the way of parking, so I recommend biking to these access points or taking Siesta Breeze Island Trolley. The trolley is free for anyone to ride and usually you can expect no more than a 30 minute wait for the next shuttle. As you can see on the map, it covers the entire village and all of Beach Road, so there's little you cannot access on Siesta Key. If you're near the village, the trolley picks up and drops off at the Siesta Market, so you always have easy access to groceries without even cranking your car. If you've driven to Siesta Key, I don't want you to think that you don't need a vehicle while you're here. And though some beach access points do not offer many parking spots, that is not the case for Turtle Beach. On the very south end of the island, Turtle Beach has plenty of parking. There are on-site kayak and paddleboard rentals, and usually has a stunning beach where sea turtles often frequent. Unfortunately, when I was there, the local government were in the middle of a massive beach reconstruction. I hope this video helps you plan your next vacation to Siesta Key. It truly is a wonderful place for a family to enjoy, and you don't have to break the bank to get here. Slack Tides.